Hello, I am Nico Lolsberg from Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research and my topic is ground-based solar image restoration with unsupervised deep learning. So this is a joint work with Andres Asensio Ramos from Canary Islands Institute of Astrophysics and uh, he is behind the idea of this method and has previously uh, applied it on uh, stellar images but in this talk we will show some results um, for solar images. First I will uh, be shortly discussing the method of multi-frame polite deconvolution with phase diversity because this is uh, in the heart of uh, why uh, unsupervised deep learning can be applied and uh, next I will discuss the neural networks architecture and uh, then the results and conclusions. So here is a picture taken from Paxman et al. Uh, 1996 which shows the uh, principle of how data is collected. So we have an extended object in our case certain region in the solar atmosphere and from this distant object, the light rays pass through turbulent atmosphere and aberrated optical system. And then we have a beam splitter uh, so that uh, two images are formed. One is this conventional image in focus and the other one is in defocus. This way we can um, gather more, more data and uh, regularize the uh, problem. And uh, assuming that for a certain duration the object is static, then we collect hundreds of uh, atmospheric frames uh, or the, these pairs of focused and defocused images and uh, this batch of frames is later uh, fed into the deconvolution pipeline. Now we will go a little bit into the theory of image formation. Uh, basically the measured image on the sensor is a result of convolution of the true object with the point spread function which is unknown and uh, there is an additive uh, photon noise. So J here represents the atmospheric frame and K represents the phase diversity. In our case, this runs only to one, uh, from one to two. So in Fourier domain, this same equation, when omitting some details, uh, it's very simple. It's just, uh, uh, well, instead of convolution, we have just the multiplication now. And uh, uh, this capital S is now called the uh, optical transfer function. The uh, point spread function uh, itself can be expressed by a so-called um, generalized pupil function, which is a multiple, which is just a product of, of uh, aperture of the telescope and then the exponential factor, which involves the uh, phase aberration. We also call it uh, basically the wavefront and this is where the unknown part comes in from and we have also this uh, diversity term which is uh, known to us and uh, the goal is simultaneously to learn the unknown object and also this unknown wavefront to be able to do that uh, one has to parameterize this wavefront. So usually either um, Zernike or Carver and Loeb expansion is used as basis. In our uh, later tests, we use the Carver and Loeb expansion, um, which makes the coefficients uh, independent under the Komogorov uh, turbulence assumption. So here is just uh, picture of, of uh, some of the Nikki polynomials and uh, their corresponding point spread functions. 
Now, if we assume that this optical transfer function has been already estimated, then uh, the object uh, can be estimated using this closed form solution. And uh, if one uh, just sticks this solution into the least coarse error metric, then uh, one can derive this uh, uh, loss function. The problem with this loss function is that it's uh, time con consuming to optimize it with respect to parameters uh, due to nonlinearities and uh, several Fourier transforms involved in gradient calculation steps. So to speed up the process, um, the aim is to learn wavefront coefficients using neural networks. So here is the architecture of the neural network we use. So it's a typical um, convolutional neural network with uh, so-called uh, ResNet blocks. Uh, on next slide, I will uh, show more details about uh, each of this block, but uh, in a nutshell, we feed to the input a pair of focused and defocused images. Then they pass through these ResNet blocks and uh, eventually we learn uh, certain latent which features, which are then passed through by directional uh, gated recurrent unit, which is a simpler version of long short term memory. This is uh, useful because we assume that uh, consecutive atmospheric frames uh, are correlated with each other. So that's where the uh, idea of using uh, that unit comes from. Uh, and uh, now for each time step, the output consists of uh, 44 dimensional uh, set of wavefront coefficients. Now, Given these equations I showed earlier, we can calculate the optical transfer function and together with the input images here, we can calculate uh, this uh, multi-frame blind peak convolution uh, loss. So here is here are more details about the network. So um, uh, I won't go through it uh, to save time but uh, viewers can later refer to it uh, if they are interested in, uh, in details. So uh, we tested our network on uh, microlens fed uh, hyperspectral image and data uh, and our training set on, consisted of uh, 10,000 different um, isoplanetic patches. Uh, each patch consisted of uh, 128 um, atmospheric frames, and these patches were uh, 96 times 96 pixels. Now, one epoch of training uh, on a GPU that was available to us. Uh, uh, took uh, roughly 30 minutes and we trained uh, for over than 50 epochs after which the validation error was almost saturated. Uh, at this time, the restoration of the full field takes around 17 seconds. Uh, but this includes, of course, calculating these uh, optical transfer functions and doing the full restoration. If we would only want to predict wafer coefficients, it would be even much faster. But this um, restoration speed uh, is already several orders of magnitude faster that can be achieved uh, with any gradient descent based uh, optimization method. Of course, assuming that the GPUs are not used and our code was implemented in PyTorch 1.4. Now I uh, show some of the preliminary results. So um, on the left, 
column there is uh, shown the result from the multi-object multi-frame blind deconvolution algorithm which is the state-of-the-art method at the moment in the middle column there is a result from the given neural network uh, with an architecture I just showed and on the right column uh, I have plotted the ratio of the loss function values so we see that the the neural network doesn't quite achieve as low loss function value as the state-of-the-art method uh, achieves. However, if we look at the contrast of the restoration, then um, actually neural network is slightly even better here. When we look at the wavefront coefficients, which uh, have been predicted, uh, now the um, blue line represents the state-of-the-art method uh, coefficients and the uh, red one, uh, the coefficients predicted by the neural network. Uh, so we see that um, first 10 uh, coefficients are matching very well. So neural network uh, does a good job. However, for the higher order coefficients, uh, there is an obvious correlation between the coefficients, but uh, it, it is seen that neural network uh, just doesn't generalize. Uh, now, if we look at the corresponding um, wavefronts and uh, point spread functions, um, uh, we see that uh, qualitatively uh, the results are matching quite well. Uh, however, for the defocused point spread function, the differences between the State of the art method and neural network are are, um, are bigger. So there is um, there is definitely room for improvement. Uh, and uh, finally, I show the um, horizontally averaged power spectrum of the restored um, image. So here we see that uh, the neural network has achieved almost the same restoration quality as the state-of-the-art method and uh, we see how the phase separations have been eliminated as well as uh, uh, photon noise uh, removed. So we see that there is a peak potential in the method we propose and uh, to come to conclusions then um, as we saw, neural network results are still slightly worse than the, than the multi-object, uh, multi-frame blind deconvolution results. Uh, and the uh, uh, main reason for that uh, we saw was that the higher order coefficients are, are basically predicted very poorly. Uh, one possible solution is to just generate more independent and diverse training data, uh, more with more atmospheric uh, frames for each small batch, as well as more uh, independent objects. Uh, maybe we have to reconsider the architectural changes to the neural network or some input data um, like pre-processing in a wise way and um, yeah and uh, finally I would like to point out that uh, why we are doing this is that we regardless of these um, unanswered questions uh, there is huge advantage in using neural networks uh, we, we gain in performance basically three orders of magnitude and of course, yeah, this all comes from the fact that we are easily able to use GPUs and um, yeah, so we are continuing this work and hopefully we will soon start to see even better results. And that is the end of my talk. Thank you for listening and thank you for your time.